if you're just going in a, a straight line and you don't have any destination in mind and you just keep driving, well then my friends, that's insanity and you will run out of gas. Hey, hey, and welcome back everyone to another episode of Successful Styles Academy podcast. I'm Drea and I am hosting today with my partner in crime, or more accurately, I'm probably your partner in crime, Ambrosia Carey. We are going to be talking about dun, 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 marketing mistakes that salons make, that stylists make to have a little conversation about that and hopefully set you straight and up for success. But before we jump into that, we have to say a big, big thank you to all of you who continue to support us, to listen in, to be a part of our community, and to give us those five-star reviews. You guys, those really, really help us. They help us to know what you need. They help us to grow, and they help the right people find us. So thank you so, so much. And Ambrosia, do you want to kick us off today? Heck yes. Um, hi everyone. Thank you for hanging out with us. This is not the sexiest of topics in the world, but it is something that we felt like it was really relevant. And because we help businesses so much with marketing strategies and just coming up with the right tactics to help them grow their business. This is something that we have noticed just in time talking to both salon owners, hairstylists, independents, even small businesses that tend to kind of get brushed under the rug, so to speak. So (laughs) I think one of the biggest things that I see happen is that the fact that a lot of people don't really think about where their business or who they're marketing to specifically. And I guess that would be like my number one thing is not knowing your target market or your ideal client, so to speak. When I talk to people, they're like, I want my place to be so amazing that everyone wants to come there. And although that sounds like this beautiful utopian world, the reality of it is if you're marketing to everyone, you're really marketing to no one. And it doesn't help you with growing a strong business. When I say a strong business, I mean people who undyingly will stay there. They will cut back on eating out to restaurants and traveling if there's a recession, but they will still continue to see you because they see so much value in you. They're the ones that are going to help you keep your business afloat when times get hard. Um, They're the ones who are going to come back time and time again and help with that retention rate so that you actually have a business to come back to tomorrow and the next day. So this is the reason why I really want to kind of put the needle on the record and really just like get that music flowing, because I think it's really important that you know who exactly you're targeting to so that you can build your inner community and have a very strong foundation and it invites all the right people in and it gives you the chance to expand into something that aligns with you always. If you are in a place where you're not exactly sure gaining that clarity, we can always do a clarity discovery call. We can always, you know, maybe you can put it to pen to paper and you can actually sit down and think to yourself, like who is my absolute favorite person that I want to see continuing again. If you're not sure, you can ask your best friends. You can ask people around you. What is it that attracts you to me? Why do you like coming to see me? What do you like? What do you look forward to the most when you sit in my chair or come to my salon, come into my space, whatever your business format might be. But that is something that's important to know the answer to before you actually move forward in the next step. So that is, I want to kick it off with that. Andrea, I know you've got some stuff for us, so I'm going to pass it back to you. I really love the, if you are targeting everyone, you're targeting no one. Um, That's really, really huge because sometimes I think we forget to think exactly who we're targeting. And I don't know, that's, that's just like a really great tip in itself. So you guys, I want to be really transparent before I go into my first thing, because these are basic, but I think they're true to me. And I believe that they're going to be true for a lot of you too. So marketing, um, Ambrosia, this is like a huge strength of yours. And you guys, I highly encourage um, you guys to do coaching calls and to really set you up for success for marketing with Ambrosia, with Successful Styles Academy. Take advantage of that. Um, You probably won't get me on the other line. I'm just saying, but (laughs) I'm learning as I go. And I think it's really, really valuable to share the process of where we're at. And that's what I'm really doing with you guys today. So, you know, marketing is not my strength, but it is necessary. It is a little fascinating for me. It's a love hate. And so the first thing for me with mistakes in marketing is trying to do too much too fast. And 
Thank you. It's a really good I, one. <laughs> I'm an idea girl, you guys. And <laughs> I get inspired and I see something shiny. And I mean, I'm diving down to the bottom of the ocean for it. And I need to remember <laughs> to come up and take a breath real quick. So, so for me, it's, you know, maybe you, you did a virtual class, maybe you attended something and it was too much, or maybe it was just enough, or maybe it was a little over your head. But for me, as I take in all this information and then I'm like, I leave and I'm like, I'm going to do a blog. I'm going to do a newsletter. I'm going to start collecting all the emails. I need to get on. What is it? MailChimp? What, wait, what was the other one? Oh, wait, how do I get on that? Which one was free? <laughs> um, you know, oh, I need, I'm going to post every single day. I'm going to go ahead and be on every single platform. Wait, how much is SEO? How much is algorithm? Oh my gosh, you guys, it's so much. So I would say, take your notes, get inspired, and then set up some tangible, attainable goals that you can start with. And I just want to say doing too much too fast. So to do the opposite of that, what that looks like for me is to think about three ways to market that feel genuine to me, that I have enough information to actually execute and to start with those. So a lot of times when I'm doing my artistic development coaching with people, I just split. I just am like, we need to be on SEO and we need to be an algorithm. What are the top three places that you feel most comfortable navigating? And let's go from there. So maybe those top three would be Instagram, Pinterest, and YouTube. Let's just say that that's where you start. And I know Ambrosia has so many marketing things, but this is just an example of have three key initiatives. Try not to do too much too fast. Get inspired take the notes, go back and look at the notes later. Once you've already accomplished those three key initiatives for at least six months. So yeah, we're really aligned on this, Drea. My next actually piece that I was going to talk about is to not have a clear vision or plan. That's a really common one for people. It's easy to get inundated and overwhelmed by all the different options. Therefore nothing happens, or you might go real hard for like one to two weeks and then burn out. So having a clear vision and plan on how you want to execute something is just starting from a to B. And then you can actually move from there. If you feel really confident or competent in one social media platform, and that's all you have the time or space for do it and create a plan on how you want to execute it. And then you can go back to your insight. You can take a look and you can, you might actually be surprised by what is gaining the most traction. Maybe you get more website clicks from a very specific post. And so then you decide, oh, if that went really well on that platform, it actually might go well on another one. So then you decide, I'm going to go ahead and just dabble in Pinterest a little bit. And so then you decide, you know, I can dedicate one hour a week and that's maybe that's it just one hour a week. And you're going to go on Pinterest and you're going to take the insights that you actually have from Instagram and you're going to create material just for Pinterest. And it can lead back to your Instagram, for instance, like you can totally have it going there. Let's say you don't have a website yet. Maybe you just feel way overwhelmed by it. So just starting with one thing, taking the stats from that one thing, bringing it over to another platform and seeing if you can do a rinse and repeat with that. If it doesn't work though, then you know, and you're like, okay, I'll try a different approach. That's really where it comes down to like with marketing, you're just taking the strength of your message, reaching the people that you want to reach and you're testing out the process. And then once you find exactly how to execute, when you get to know your audience, where they live the best on that platform that's where it becomes very clear for you. And that is where you execute that plan. But it started out with the vision, having a vision, executing a plan, putting pen to paper and really evaluating how much time do I have for this thing? What do I want to do with it? What time am I going to check in on it? How often am I going to do it? And then when I take the stats from it, what am I going to do from there? So start with that guys. Those are really tangible goals that you can actually, and this is going to be a 30 day thing, by the way, do this for 30 days and then go from there. You don't need to know all the steps all at once. Yes. Just start somewhere. I think not knowing all the steps at once. Like sometimes I think we're perfectionists within our create creativity and behind the chair. So then we carry that over to the things that we're not supposed to be perfect at yet. Right. We're just learning it. Like be brave enough to suck at something new. Right. Is what they say. So I think not knowing, knowing that it's not going to be perfect, give yourself some grace, leave room for trial and error, but start trying something, um, and see what does stick and what does work. I think that's great. Um, I know we're being really straightforward with this. So I have two more and the next one is, um, which I mean, kind of rolls out from what you just said as well is, um, 
only utilizing social media platforms in your marketing. And I think that's a huge miss. And that's really something that you have helped me discover Ambrosia because SEO was a little overwhelming for me. I mean, I started out and I was just on social media platforms and it was all I could do to keep that role in. And the thing is, sometimes we work really hard to create our posts and what we share and what we put out there into the world is important to us. So I think when we're doing that, taking a little extra time and thought and having that vision so that we can have a little more reach with the work and creativity that we're already putting into something is really, really important to put that, the thought process and just a little bit more time into. So for example, if you are on Facebook, if you are on TikTok, if you are on Instagram, all great places to be sharing your work and having, having an extension of your voice and your brand. But a lot of times that is going, you create a post, you work really hard on a reel and it goes live and maybe you have an hour, right? Maybe you have a day. I mean, you know that you know the time better than I do on this Ambrosia, but there's a really limited amount of time. And there's a lot of things that come into play on how long that is up for and how much exposure you get based upon like comments and shares and likes and all of these things. The difference between the algorithm and SEO is SEO is kind of there forever. You put in certain keywords, they get searched and your post, your not your post, but your blog, your video, it can really come up years and years later and you might be seen by a new person or new audience or sell a a class workshop that, you know, you weren't necessarily promoting because of something you post on an SEO platform or page versus something that is getting lost in the algorithm of social media. So I would just say if you are only on social media platforms, take a minute to look at which would be what Ambrosia like Pinterest, YouTube, having your own website and having a space and a blog page. Um, Let me know, you know, chime in. But um, those are some opportunities where you could really take advantage of also having exposure on SEO and not just utilizing algorithm through your social media platforms. I'm glad you spoke to that. It's really common, unfortunately, for a lot of businesses to get caught up in the day to day rather than the the true larger vision, the big, bigger story of that vision and to take the day to day and be able to take that information, extract it and put it onto a larger platform. You're not reinventing anything. You're just taking the main parts from it. And you're actually going to expand on that story and to have like a system that you are able to, you know, place that into a tangible place rather than it being like, okay, one of these days I'm going to do it. I'm just going to save it to my notes for now. Make sure that you actually take that step. You actually carve out the time where you're like, okay, I have these top three posts that did really well. And this is the story that they had in common. And so now I'm going to actually going to take this information and put on my website this week, or I'm going to take it and I'm going to put it onto a blog post this week, or I'm going to be a guest on someone's podcast and I'm going to talk about it there. Or maybe you have a video that you're going to put together and you're going to send that out to your clients. So there's a lot of places that that can live, but the information has already come from someplace else. You don't have to recreate that information. So that's the important part of all of this. Another missed opportunity I see with a lot of salon owners, specifically salons itself is not not doing their market research. I mean, raise your hands if you haven't done market research before, or you kind of lack in it, or you might have intended on doing it. And that just never really quite came to fruition. Market research is basically a way to gather information and to better understand your target market, to understand the business's products and information, the experience that you are attracting the type of clients, the quality of your leads, and to improve your conversion rates, which is really important. Part of target marketing also is where your pricing strategies come from. So knowing your demographics and your surrounding areas, the zip codes that are around you, the top clients that are coming to you. What's really cool about this though, is that you actually don't have to create the whole wheel by yourself. Most of us have the back end in the systems that we're using for booking our clients anyway. And if you actually look at those stats, it will tell you a little bit. Unfortunately, the hard part about this is if you're using multiple platforms, like let's say you're using square for your transactions, but then you're using, um, 
Drea, what do you use? You're using like Vergaro or something for your, for your yep. booking system. Okay. So if you're using Vergaro for your booking system, but you're using square for your processing system, that might not give you an accurate reading entirely. So you would want to look at the back end of both of them. And I'm not saying like break out large spreadsheets and like really get the town, go to town on it and have like one of those, like a beautiful mind moments or whatever that movie is. Um, yes. the, I, what I'm saying is look for the peaks and valleys, like look to see where things were high and low and figure out what it was that attracted that type of client in there. And that's going to help you come up with a better strategy on how you can attract more people like that. And then ask yourself, what am I doing for my clients that are already sitting in my chair today? And how can I get them back in to see me tomorrow? That all goes into designing your perfect target market research analogy and, or analysis, I'm sorry, that helps you come up with that analysis and that helps you execute whatever future promotions you might create for that specific person in general. So try, try that. If you're not already doing it, I know it can sound overwhelming. Give yourself just a time to do it. I would say toward the end of the year, kind of evaluate it after holidays have rushed through and look through your entire snapshot of a year. But I would say following that, do a month in month out. So at least checking in to see, okay, I ran a promotion this month and the following month, this is what happened. So that way you can see the trends of these promotions that you're doing and how it's helping or hindering your business. And then you can make a decision from there. Okay. I want to do that next year, but I want to add this in next time, or I want to not do that, but I'll do this instead. That's where you kind of get your answer. So market research, everyone do it, do it now. Marketing research is so, so crucial. And I do agree that it is a huge miss. And I know this because it was a huge miss for me for a long time. And it's something that I want to continue to get better at. Um, it does, I, it can, and does to me at first, like sound really, really overwhelming. Those are not the things that I want to spend my time doing, but again, so crucial for the long-term success for your business. And once you put that into motion, I feel like so many things grow in such a positive way that it's not something that's overwhelming forever. So I know that when I listen, I can go into like a complete brain melt. So if it's something that you need help with, we would love to hear from you, first of all, because that's part of SSA specialty. So I have to like shamelessly plug that and put that in there because it is important and it can be overwhelming. And we would love to come alongside you and maybe dedicate again, like just start somewhere. Maybe you can only do one hour a week and you kind of just start rough draft trial and error doing your market research. I think that that's a really great place to start. Um, also a financial or marketing consultant that maybe you can check in with quarterly that would be helpful in making sense of your market research would be a great way to go, especially as a salon owner. So huge. Thank you, Ambrosia. My last one seems simple, but I think it happens a lot. And I think for hairdressers that are like squirrel, squirrel, like this is a huge one for us and it's lack of consistency and engagement. So I'm going to work backwards a little bit. And when I say engagement, I feel like stylist independently, we're a little bit better at this, but I think sometimes salon owners and having been a salon owner, I feel like this can be a little bit of a miss as well is the engagement. So a lot of times when I'm coaching, one thing that I say is do not expect more support views engagement than what you're willing to pay forward. So I feel like we post our stuff. We work really hard at it. We're on our page pages and maybe we want people to see what we're up to, but ask yourself the question, how much support am I giving? How much engagement am I doing? How much am I encouraging someone? How much am I commenting on their creativity, their work, their business? How often am I sharing other people's things when I'm posting my own stuff? So I really, really think community, reaching out, partnering with people, sharing people's vision, coming alongside them. I really think that that is a big, big part of marketing that connects us with other people and gives us more exposure in a really beautiful, genuine way. So I would say, make sure that you're also giving what you expect to receive, because I think that that doesn't happen a lot of times. And then the last one for me is lack of consistency. And it kind of goes hand in hand with my first one of like trying to do too much too fast. If you can't post six days a week, don't tell yourself you're going to 
post six days a week because you are setting yourself up for failure and you're probably going to get bummed out and burnt out really, really fast. So set a realistic goal and try to be consistent with that goal for a certain amount of time. I mean, I said six months for some things um, that were more long, long term. when you're trying out new things. I know Ambrosia, you said 30 days. So find a spot where you can give yourself a date, where you can give yourself a certain amount of time, see how you're doing, make sure you've been able to be consistent with your goals and then kind of change it and evolve from there. So for example, let's just say a social media platform and you wanna be consistent. Although I want to be posting three plus stories every single day, except for maybe Sundays on my like no social media Sunday, and I want to do five to six posts a week, including reels, that may not be realistic for someone who is just trying to build their social media. So my suggestion then would be try to do two stories five days a week and try to do three posts a week and see if you can be consistent with that before you try to extend or move to a second platform. Because I think that once you're able to be consistent, you can refurbish what you're posting and then you can be consistent somewhere else. So um, consistency, I think, is key. And um yeah. Some other marketing mistakes I think that salons make is not knowing where the marketing activity needs to be. So each marketing activity has a separate purpose. Set a budget for a marketing activity for the year and then create a plan that includes a solid message that becomes a theme for all marketing activities. I think sometimes when we have like, and kind of going into that is like having a call to action. There's a lot of people that don't actually list a call to action. They're just sharing a video because that's what everyone else is doing. Like I'm going to do something funny or I'm going to show some personality to my salon, although that's great, but make sure to say like, if you want to dance your pants off too, make sure that you give us a call linked in our bio or check out our, our website for more information or book a consultation with us now, things like that. But having that call to action lets people understand like, well, what am I supposed to do with this information? Not everyone is going to understand that. And sure. There might be other people that are literally just enjoying the video and that's okay too. That's consumption. But it's really important to understand that if you're doing it in a specific platform, what your objective is within that platform. And I think sometimes that's where clarity hasn't happened quite yet. It's hard to come up with a marketing strategy when you don't know or have a clear action plan set in motion on like what activity you're actually trying to get. Are you trying to raise awareness? Are you trying to build up your online presence? Are you trying to get more clients through it? Are you attracting new hairstylists? Are you educating? Are you trying to, you know, be entertaining because you're working with brands and they're paying you for that? Like you have to understand where that activity is coming from and what your objective is with that activity. Otherwise it's going to feel like a chore and that's never fun. And I think that's what ends up happening is people get exhausted with marketing efforts because they want to see a direct return on that and they want to understand what happens. And sometimes it's a slow trickle. And so even if you put something out and a whole month goes by and you're not exactly sure like, Oh, okay. Somebody found me and it was through a Yelp review. Like, wow, I kind of forgot about Yelp reviews for a half a second. And then you're like, gosh, I should ask more people to do Yelp reviews. Maybe I can actually send out a new newsletter. And I could say I'm on Yelp and I would love to hear a review from you and I'll offer this to you in return. So that's something where I'm saying like you can insert certain efforts, but make sure that you're doing it for a specific purpose, because when you're doing it that way, you're doing it with intention and you're actually trying to build your business when you're doing it in other ways. It might be because Hey, I want to show that I'm relevant in this piece and that I'm moving forward with like a new, you know, like maybe you're just trying something out and that's okay too. So there's where the awareness comes in. Each marketing activity has a separate purpose. Just keep that in mind as a business in general. It doesn't even matter if you're a salon, like if you're a business and you're listening to this, think about that long and hard. Like, what is it that I want to do? Sometimes it's hard to really know when you're not exactly sure where you want to start with it, or maybe you're only doing specific things. You're not really sure if it's actually making some gain. And that is is kind of what I help people with. I even work with mid-sized companies that they're like, well, we've been kind of doing this, but we don't really have a set plan of action yet. And we kind of need you to just help us come up with a plan of action. And that's where I'm able to get like a snapshot. It's easier for me to look on the, from the outside than for you to be caught up on the inside because you are doing so many other things within the operation of the business, or maybe you're focusing so much on the client or you're focusing so much on the hairdresser, whatever it is that your focus may be, you might not be able to get that bird eye view or that 
you know, you might be stuck a little bit more in your like tunnel of what you're doing right now versus what you could be doing on the outside. So that's part of the reason why we exist in general. That's why we're here for you guys through this journey of understanding where you can market your business and yourself as a provider to not be stuck in this, this, this race where you're just trying to keep up, keep up, keep up. Okay. So that was my tangent. I'm going to go on to, uh, I think, you know, I, I kind of touched on this a little bit, but I talked about client retention. Right. And I've talked about this before. I'm not going to stop talking about it guys. Guess what? <laughs> it's some, unfortunately with a, a world where everyone has so many options, it's, you know, it, it feels natural for us to try to get new clients, new clients, new clients, but sometimes things happen where maybe we get a bad review and we don't notice it because we're not checking in on that. And and we're actually like losing money because we're not serving our clients to the best of our abilities. So getting really cemented on how we can take better care of those who are sitting in our chair, that's going to grow by itself. Let's not take away from the fact that there is person to person marketing that can happen. We're always marketing whether we want to or not. And I know I've said this before. I have a feeling that all you guys know this that are listening, but what a great reminder to think of it like this. It doesn't all have to happen on a digital platform. You don't have to show up all the time and do dances on TikTok or do funny reels and be a comedian or show your face all the time. Just understanding like, how do I build relationships and how can I build deeper relationships? And starting with that is going to be a bigger, better, more global answer than understanding how do I reach people on all platforms? Because that is where that's the burnout. That's where burnout starts to come in. And it's also where it's hard to keep like a sustainable momentum going with that too. Cause we need to have days off too, guys. Like everyone deserves a day off. Everyone deserves to have downtime. Everyone deserves to have a detox. Everyone deserves to, um, you know, have a well-rounded balance, whatever that means to you. And by getting that, making sure that you're concerning your efforts in the best way possible is going to get you to that piece. I think sometimes we think about money a little too much and money is important, but time is more important. If you're spending 10 hours on something because it's free and it doesn't cost any money for you, but if you were to take, how many clients can you take in 10 hours? If you just had one extra day of taking clients and you made that much money and you pretended that money wasn't actually yours, you're just doing it. Let's pretend that it was a day off and you're like, okay, I'm just going to do 10 hours. Like, I know this is not realistic. Just stick with me for a second. For 10 hours, you're like, okay, I'm going to do this for 10 hours. And instead of going on a boating trip or instead of like just sitting on my couch and watching TV, I'm just going to do this. I'm going to take these clients for this one day and all the money I make from those 10 hours, I'm going to put it back into my business, but I'm going to hire somebody to run this for me. Or I'm going to make sure that I am putting an ad on these three things. And then I'm just going to let it go. How amazing would that be if you actually got like five times return on that? Like, I just want you to try it because I guarantee that is going to be a better way of spending your time and actually making more money in the long run. Um, please don't confuse this. Like don't work an extra day. Don't work the extra 10 hours. I'm trying to put it in perspective. Like sometimes people discount their time because they think they're going to make more money and they only look at the dollar. They look at the dollar that they made from the time they were in the chair. They don't look at the time they spent for the five hours that surrounded that one client. So try to build up that time block and really see like, Ooh, um, if I actually divide it by the number of hours I put into it, then I actually didn't really make that much money. But if I worked on these three things, uh, the three key initiatives that Drea was talking about earlier, if I'm on one social media platform and two SEO platforms, and I'm concerting those efforts five hours every single week, and I make sure I do that on a continual basis, and then it starts to work like clockwork, kind of like some of the other um, sources of income that I was talking to you guys about the seven sources of income that I was mentioning in uh, last week's podcast. I think it's really important to understand like where those concerted efforts are going and what the return of it is on. Um, that way we can maximize our, our business and we don't have to be in the business all the time. So I know that was long winded and I know that it's like, hopefully I still have your attention, but those are the key things. I think that can make a business operate in a way that makes you feel like you have ultimate freedom and flexibility to do more than what you're doing today. It invites the right kind of people It invites more opportunity. It allows you to actually make more money and be more fruitful with the time that you're putting into it. 
And it also builds like something that you may not see today. Like it, it invites other opportunities that you wouldn't have ever noticed before. So I know there's a lot of repeats in here and we're probably just like beating a dead horse at this point, but understand that. And there are ways that you may be marketing yourself today that you're not even aware of. And so I'm asking you to put a little bit of energy into that and realize what you are doing. And the third thing I'm asking of you is to like, look at the time that you may be spending. Are you using that time wisely? Are you enjoying that time? Because if you find yourself having lots of meltdowns, feeling burnt out, feeling stressed, feeling like you may want to get out of the industry entirely, um, feeling lost, those are all things to check in on. And it's important to, to really like, listen to yourself. You know, the other day I was actually, well, this was yesterday. I was at, um, I visited an acupuncturist and I hadn't been for a while and you know, he was asking me, well, how often have you been coming in? I said, oh, okay, I'm a little embarrassed. It's been a long time since I've been in like years. And he says, oh gosh. Okay. And of course, acupuncture is his world. So he just can't even fathom that. And he says, well, don't forget about yourself. Don't forget to take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, gosh, I feel like I've heard these words. Oh my God. That's right. I say these words all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so uh -huh. sometimes like, it's really important. Like you can't just acknowledge it, but actually practice it and putting ourselves in the driver's seat sometimes takes us away from like viewing the rest of the world. Cause we're like, we're focused on what's in front of us, right? Just pull over and get out from time to time is what I'm asking you to do. Because if you're just going in a, a straight line and you don't have any destination in mind and you just keep driving, well, then my friends, that's insanity. And you will run out of gas. So make sure that you pull over and just look around and just decide as you go on this journey, take time for yourself, take care of yourself, put a little bit more effort into where your destination is going to be, AKA your marketing strategy. And I promise you're going to have a, you're going to feel more cemented in your belief systems. You're going to invite the right kind of people in, and you're going to have a lot more opportunities coming your way. And you're going to reinvest back into the artistic side of you. Everyone has a hidden artist in them. Even if you're not a hairstylist, if you're a salon owner, you're not even practicing hair anymore. And you like the business side. We all have an artist in us and we want to make sure that we're feeding the artist too, because we don't want to, um, be in a place where we feel stuck. And that's, that's really what this is all about is making sure that we keep reigniting our passion and we take care of ourselves in the process. Otherwise, what, what is the point? Such, such great advice. And I mean, and a lot of things to like, to think about, and maybe we have thought about them, but just like really going back into revisiting them. I think a lot of times people are like, oh, you know, you seem really easy going and you know, what's your secret. And a lot of times my secret is there's freedom in the foundation. So creating the foundation and having a routine that I can go back to allows me that freedom in all of the spaces in between. So I, I was kind of thinking about that, like, as you were talking and talking about, you know, finding that balance and going in and like doing the work so that when you're not doing the work, you're actually not doing the work because I feel like sometimes we're always doing something instead of sometimes just being like, no, this is totally dedicated to freedom, not doing anything, real vacation, not looking at screens. And I think um, that is the balance is like really having the freedom based upon the foundations that that we that we do create. So last, last two things I'm just going to mention. I want you to, you can, you can wrap us up, take us home. All the things Ambrosia <laughs> is I have to do marketing in a way that does make sense to me as an artist, because if it gets too numbery, too overwhelming for me, I'll do nothing. Like, you know, it's like, oh, there's so much to do. Guess what I'll do. Um, let me binge watch stranger things. Um, that's usually going to be <laughs> That's going to be my answer. So for me, it's so important to develop your why and then to revisit it often. And you spoke a little bit about this in different words, but to me, what that looks like is I love my three key initiatives. So developing your three key initiatives, like why are you marketing? What is your goal? Like you said, is it to get new clients? Is it to get exposure? Is it to get noticed by companies? Like 
determine the three key initiatives you have for marketing, whether that's being on a social media platform, having your website, doing a blog, doing a newsletter, like what are your three key initiatives? And then one thing I like to do because it makes sense to me is I find three to five emotions that I want people to experience when they visit any page that I've created. So I want them to feel welcome. I want them to feel inspired. I want them to feel educated. Maybe I want them to feel lighthearted or playful. So those would be things that I want people to feel that I want you guys to feel when you come onto my page when you come onto my platforms, when you engage with me. And that's what I want people to feel one-on-one when they sit in my chair too. So that is no different. So I develop my why. I revisit it often because when you lose your why, you can lose your way. So if we are out there just winging it, like, you know, like you mentioned, doing a funny post, doing this or that, but it has no purpose or no intention, I think it is definitely a marketing miss. So develop your why, revisit it often often find your three key initiatives, the purpose of why you're doing what you're doing and the three to five emotions that you want people to experience when they engage with you. Um, You said something really beautiful several times when you're teaching marketing that stuck with me, Ambrosia, and it helps me to not look at marketing like a chore. And we all stand behind the chair. We conversate, we're good at it. We have stories. We're talking about this and that with our clients. So it's the same thing. Marketing is just an extension of your story that you're sharing with other people in multiple ways. So I like that. It helped me not get overwhelmed and I'm going to let you take it away. It's true. It's just like what we were saying to you guys before, like, you know, when we always open up with saying like your podcast reviews, help the right people find us. That's an extension of the marketing. Cause we want to make sure that we're giving you guys value and you are our people. You're listening to this for a reason because you feel like, okay, I'm connected to these people and I have the same why. And even if the way we go about it might be a little differently, we still want to have like those deeper, more solid rooted connections. And we want to feel like we're, we have a purpose behind the design of what we're doing. Most of us do some people, I think, you know, they have a little bit more of a journey ahead of them in order to discover the purpose of that design. So in any case, I want to encourage you guys to continue this journey, this conversation with us. I can't wait to see you guys at our first successful stylist Academy social here in Portland in October. So if you didn't already get your ticket, definitely join us because we are going to have a marketing party and I'm going to show you guys how fun marketing can be. I know it doesn't sound fun, but I promise it can be so much fun. And I kind of want to walk you through the steps of what I do when I do it. And I'm going to show you how I can go on a two week vacation and I can't like, yes, I have some things that I do while I'm away, but I have a bunch of stuff that I do that leads up to it. And I always have things that I'm doing on the back end. So think of it kind of like, um, like, a uh, what are those things that you turn the timetable of our, what, these are oh, the days of our lives. What's that thing I called? Know. <laughs> what is that thing a called? Sand, like the time, the sand. I don't know what it's yeah, called. The sand <laughs> thing. Oh my gosh. Somebody help us. Jeez. Anyway, hourglass, <laughs> the hourglass. <laughs> I always think of an hourglass, right? And so if we're going to let each granule go through this, this hourglass, like that is our time. And we want to make sure that we are replenishing ourselves before we turn that back over again. So that probably wasn't the best analogy ever, but I always think of a sand glass or an hourglass, whatever the heck you call that thing. Um, anyway, <laughs> I'm, I'm big into <laughs> analogies. I'm always like snow globe, sand glass, restaurants, you know, uh, vehicles. Remember I'm always talking about like boats and cars and stuff like that. Yes. Anyway, I like I'm, it. <laughs> you like it? Okay, good. So I love, I love hanging out with you guys. I love chatting with you. I definitely want to encourage you guys to reach out to us if you have any questions or if you just have things that like have resonated with you over the past gosh. I mean, I think we're kind of going, we're coming up on a year of, of doing this podcast and it's been really special to me. And I want to encourage all you guys to dream big, set goals, take action, hang out with us, be a part of our community. You know, we are a phone call, a DM an email message away. You guys know that we're very receptive to all avenues, all vehicles, all boats and ships of communication, <laughs> carrier <laughs> pigeon, whatever. <laughs> uh, so I, <laughs> I really encourage you guys to hang out with us some more and we will see you guys next week with our next topic. And guess what guys, it's going to be the close down on season two next week. So hang out with us. It's going to be a special one. Take care. And I'll talk to you next week. Thank you.